Thank you. Big round of applause for our next lesson. Hi everyone. Well, before even starting, I have got a very important question. Who has been enjoying the heat wave this week? No. Who's been hating the heat wave? <laughs> Mixed audience with a very loud group of haters. Well, yeah, I have a confession for you. I like it hot. Very, very hot. So hot that I would consider myself a heat expert. And I can already hear you wondering, what the hell is a heat expert? Where do you get that kind of credentials? So let me tell you, I'm an ace. I was born in Spain, of all places, in the middle of summer, in the heat wave of 1993, if that was even a heat wave, apparently it was a very hot one, in Seville, renowned for having high 40s from the winds that blow from the Sahara Desert. I've actually seen 52 degrees whilst growing up in Spain. I think by naturalization, I already automatically become a heat expert. I also frequently confuse my shiracha with ketchup and eat it without batting an eyelid. And I estimated last year whilst at home that my favorite temperature to exist is 39.3 degrees Celsius. It's that temperature where I literally have to expend zero energy thermoregulating my body to feel like I'm at the right temperature. And of course, like any Sp Spaniard from the south of Spain, I feel we are all experts every summer in three things. Preventing forest fires, preventing heat stroke, and cooking eggs on sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> so with all that being said, I am here to bring along the expertise from the south of Spain to protect yourself from the heat and to keep your cool with the inspiration of animals who do it a lot better than us. So as a Spaniard, it's very easy to tell who has come to Spain and is a tourist who has never experienced anything above 35 and who lives there. And how do you know? The tourists are the only people out on the street between the times of 11 and 3. This is very important because the best way to avoid the heat and to protect yourself is just simply not to be in the heat. Animals do this pretty well. There are plenty of cold-blooded animals that do estivation, which is a fancy word for hibernation, but in the summer. So don't want to deal with that, don't want to deal with having to hydrate yourself all the time. That's cool, just shut down for the summer, come back for business in September when it's all over. Um, some mammals do it as well, those actually live in Africa, so they would technically be estivating during our own personal winter seasons, which tying on to Rob's two solstices, um, I just realized I very narrowly missed two solstices, or that, solstices, that's quite a hard word to say. Um, yesterday, I flew back from Cape Town, literally going from the shortest day of the year in one country to the longest day of the year in another, just to give you this talk. <laughs> However, ignoring the heat, you know, not all of us can estimate, I'm pretty sure some of us have to work on our PhDs or our own personal flavor of work during the summer. So other things that animals do, they bury themselves in the sand because it's only the top layer that's very hot. But I can hear the complaints, I can hear people saying, well that's all right for you, you can just stay out of the sun. But some of us actually have to go through the sunshine. So here's step two in identifying tourists in the south of Spain. We call them prawns for a reason. <laughs> There's something about being above 30 degrees latitude where people seem to forget that there is such a thing as sun cream. And I'm gonna go all parent patronizing and money <laughs> on all of you because sun cream is so, so important. I have discovered why the English might not like to wear it. The sun cream here is blue. And I know that being a Smurf isn't sexy, but <laughs> it's, trust me, it's better than getting sunburn. Each time you get sunburnt, you're getting UVA and UVB radiation burning the skin, changing DNA, making you more prone to developing very nasty melanomas and also aging the skin faster. So whilst it's not very pleasant to put on the icky and slimy sunscreen, which I'm now trying to very coolly put on for the lack of sun women, it's still better than the sunburn. Um, 
you probably will never have to go above 50 SPF. This is the other thing, no one knows which SPF they should be going for. You probably want between 20 and 30, maybe 50 if you're very fair or you're going to be out in the sun for a long time. Reapply every two hours if you go into the water, make sure you buy ones that are protected against water. 90 SPF, that's just so chemists can make money and promise this is not a big pharma conspiracy. <laughs> Unless you have a scar that you're trying to heal or a tattoo or something that you want to protect from the sun. Otherwise, there's not usually a need for 90 SPF. But seriously, stay safe. Sun cream is very important. And if you're like, well, I wear makeup, then I've actually discovered I don't wear very much makeup, but there are these wonderful things called BB cream, CC cream, that actually contain SPF in it, so it's perfectly blended. And the animal kingdom produces sunscreen as well. Um, people have isolated this compound called gadusol from zebrafish. Who knows why zebrafish have sun cream <laughs> inside them? And I can guarantee that eating zebrafish is not going to make you secrete sunscreen any better. <laughs> but given everyone in science is either working on fruit flies or zebrafish, pretty much as far as I know, um, that's probably how they came across the sunscreen. But, of all the animals who secrete sunscreen, the favourite has got to be my hippo. The hippo. I actually think that hippos have got their act together when it comes to dealing with heat. They live in the mud all day, keeping cool, keeping in the water, and when they come out, some of you might have heard that hippos sweat blood. They're not sweating blood and tears to keep cool, they're actually secreting an orange and red pigment, which simultaneously has this antimicrobial properties to protect them from bacteria in case they have any cuts in the skin, and the red one actually absorbs UV rays, literally secreting sunscreen to protect their skin. So the tough skin of the hippo is actually in fact very tough and well protected from the sun. Of course, coming back to you know being a mum and wanting to look after you from the sun, Sun cream isn't enough, make sure you apply it everywhere, also don't forget the back of the neck that always gets burnt. If you go to the beach, I don't know why, but everyone I know gets a burnt butt where the <laughs> swimming costume joins with the legs, so make sure you're hitting all of the different areas. But you must also remember to wear a hat, um, hands up if you've ever burnt your parting, that is pretty painful. So a hat will protect that, or you can put sun cream in your hair. Um, it's a very cool look. <laughs> and last but definitely not least at all, sunglasses. And sunglasses are the epitome of coolness. <laughs> so, and for sunglasses, you should always look out. There are different categories of sunglasses. Cheap knockoffs, they're probably not going to help your eyes. In fact, they're just going to make everything darker so your eyes open wider to one of those UV rays. Make sure they're category 2 or 3. They are also category 4, which protect from even more UV rays, but you can't drive using those. But I also hear you say, okay, cool, Ines, but, you know, I can't avoid the summer, but I'm also not working out in the sun. Like, I don't know what job you do, but mine does not involve being in the garden. Um, I'm in a hot room, and that's fine, because the other thing you can work on is ventilation. And you don't need to have, I mean, having an AC unit is great. I know Britain is not very great at having AC units given the lack of hot days that we usually have with the exception of this week, but there are ways around it. For instance, you might have heard that prairie dogs use physics to keep their underground burrows cool and ventilated. So what they do, their burrows, they usually have one entrance that is higher up than the other. And if you look at Bernoulli's principle, the one that supposedly half-arsely claims that uh, planes fly through the air using the principles of upper and lower pressure. It doesn't quite work for airplanes, but it does for, their, for these tubes. In essence, because of the difference in pressure at the two entrances, it actually makes airflow enter the lower entrance of the burrow and come out through the top without them having to do anything. So essentially, passive ventilation. And beehives are also excellent at that as well. They don't have such fancy physics systems, so they use active ventilation, and they actually point out several workers and they flap their wings to do the same. So what can we do? Well, I can recommend the very Spanish fan, very effective, very cool, and definitely does the job. And, you know, great for photo shoots if you want to look good. 
Um, pair it with some water, put the water on your face and on your limbs. I mean, I'm a firm believer that those who hate the heat just haven't quite figured out how to deal with it. Have a game of super soakers, the water balloons at each other, and then just vanish away. And the water will literally help you cool down. Or you could just wait until you sweat, but I wouldn't get that far. So that is my top tips for how to stay school in the summer. So I'm Renee Storson. Thank you for listening. Stay cool. <laughs>